Hello friends and welcome to another lecture on chemical engineering thermodynamics. This is Professor Arvind Prasad. Today we will study about Joule Thomson coefficient and how do we found, find the Joule Thomson's coefficient for a Van der Waals gas. So let's start. For Van der Waals gas, which is a real gas, the enthalpy which will be a function of temperature and pressure. So we write H is equal to HTP. Now we do a simple differential of two variables and we get dH is equal to dou H by dou T at P dT plus dou H by dou P at T dP. Now we know that dou H by dou T at P is equal to Cp which is nothing but the specific heat of any gas at constant pressure. We replace this and we get dou H is equal to Cp dT plus dou H by dou P T dp. Now from the first law we get dh is equal to tds plus vdp. Now how does this come from the first law? Let's have a look. We know that the first law for a closed system is du is equal to dq minus p dv. Now we add dpv on both the sides and we get dh which is nothing but du plus pv is equal to dq plus vdp and dq can be replaced as tds plus vdp okay so this is done now we differentiate this particular equation at constant temperature with pressure and this is what we get dou h by dou p at t is equal to t dou s by dou p at t v. Now we replace this in the above equation that is the first equation on your top and we get this equation right this is the equation we get. Now we use Maxwell's relationship to replace this that is dou s by dou t dou p at t we re replace it with Maxwell's equation and we get this as minus dou V by dou T at P. So finally, since for throttling the enthalpy remains constant, so dH is zero. Now what is exactly throttling? We need to understand here. We take a gas, we put it in a valve. And the gas comes out. The gas here is at pressure P1 and temperature T1 and out it goes at pressure P2 and temperature T2. Obviously since it's a valve P1 is greater than P2. Now since this is an open system problem we can write the first law as du by dt is equal to summation of m dot into h i cap that is the flow mass flow rates going in and out into their enthalpies plus heat given to the system plus shaft work done on the system minus p dv by dt. Now if we take this as the system the valve as the system its volume does not change with respect to time. So this is zero, right? No heat is being given. We take valve as the system, okay? No heat is given, no shaft work is done. The only thing that goes in and out of the system is the mass flow rate. And of course, since it's a steady state problem, so du by dt is equal to zero. So we have zero is equal to summation of m1 into h1 cap minus m Two dot into h2 cap that's right so we don't have this summation sign here since we have written all the terms the mass flow rate going in here is m1 dot and mass flow rate coming out here is m2 dot and the enthalpy here is h1 cap and the enthalpy here is h2 cap now since mass flow rate in is equal to mass flow rate out we have h1 cap is equal to h2 cap and therefore we have delta h is equal to 0 and this is what is taken in the equation. 
having come to this point, we can say that tau T by tau P, that is change in the temperature due to throttling, that is T2 minus T1 divided by change in the pressure, that is P2 minus P1, that will be written as tau T by tau P at constant enthalpy H is defined as nothing but mu JT. This is defined as the joule Thomson coefficient. Now this is equal to T tau V by tau T at P minus V, the whole at constant temperature over Cp. That's mu JT. That's the expression for mu JT we have. Okay. Now we replace tau V by tau T at P for a Van der Waals gas. And this is the expression we get. Now, how do we get this expression? Let's have a look to at it. So, let's choose another color. Yes. So, what we have now is, for a Van der Waals gas, we have P is equal to RT upon V minus B minus A upon V square. Now, if we differentiate this, we are going to get 0 is equal to R v minus b minus r t v minus b the whole square minus 2 a by v q and this is going to be equal to okay so i would just like to make a slight modification here to this yes right there we are there we are minus and this is going to be plus and this is going to be tau v by tau t at constant pressure p right so therefore we get the expression as rt over v minus b minus 2a okay so we take all the terms on this side minus 2a by v q is equal to R upon V minus B. And this is tau V by tau T. And therefore, we can take this expression and divide it with this expression. Okay, and we can multiply it with the temperature and we get this expression, which is the first term in the equation. That is T tau V by tau T. All we have to do is take the RHS Divide it with this expression of the LHS and multiply it with T. And this is the expression you get. Okay. Now at joule Thomson point. Okay. At inversion point, the joule Thomson coefficient is 0. Now if the joule Thomson coefficient is 0, we can rearrange the equation and we can get it this way. We can rearrange this equation by just putting here 0. Cp multiplied this side is going to be. 0 once again and we can get V on this side and we can rearrange this equation and get it this way. Okay. And solving this, we get T is equal to 2A upon RB V minus B over V the whole square. Now, it is a very good approximation. Remember, this is an approximation which is works really well that for most of the gases which tend to behave as ideal gases, tend to. You have to remember one thing, there is no ideal gas on, his, on this earth. Now, I can take a few examples, oxygen, nitrogen, hydrogen, okay. They can behave as ideal gases, right. So, we can make an approximation for them, okay. But remember one thing, for an ideal gas, A and B are zero. But sort of, you know, these kind of gases which are not very highly polar. So, I would rather like to correct myself and say for gases which are not very highly polar, we can remove V from this. So, we get 1 minus B by V over 1. Now, volume is going to be very, very great than B which is the molecular volume unless the pressures are very, very high, unless the throttling pressures are really very high. Okay, the volume would be far more greater than the molecular volume. Therefore, B by V tends to almost a very small number, which is close to zero. Okay, so we are going to get 1 minus 0 over 1 
the whole square which is going to be 1 and therefore we can get p is equal to 2a by rv. Now this approximation really works when the pressure involved in throttling is far greater away from the critical pressure. Okay. And this really works. This equation really works and it gives you reasonably accurate answers. So we get the throttling temperature. Now remember if someone asks you what is the throttling pressure at inversion point. So the answer is very direct here. You have the Von der Waals equation as A upon uh, P plus A upon V square is equal to RT upon V minus B. Now you have to replace the T and you are going to get the pressure. So if we do a rigorous calculation of this, then we are going to have is equal to R V minus B. Okay. And we are going to replace T with 2A by R B V minus B over V the whole square. So we get the pressure as P plus A above V square is equal to now we can cancel out R. We can cancel out R. So we have B surviving here and we can cancel out V minus B and we will get here V minus B. So we will get the equation as R. Okay, not R. So that's going to be 2A by B. Mm, where's my eraser? Yeah. So that's going to be is equal to Two A V minus B okay upon B into V square. Now once now see as you can see that this is a relation only between P and V. Right? This is a relation only between P and V. So the, by this you can get the pressure. If you know the volume, you can get the pressure. And if you know the volume at which the throttling is occurring, so you can even find out the temperature. Now this is the equation that you have for the pressure. And always one can go in for this approximation of the temperature, replace it in the Van der Waals equation and find the volume and therefore find the pressure if you want. Okay, so you can find the pressure of the inversion point. So we get the inversion point temperature this way and we use this approximation and we can get the pressure as a simple answer. Right? So this is one way but we can also go in for a rigorous uh, application of this equation where what we can do is we can open this equation and turn it into a cubic equation, solve it for volume after you solve it for volume, remember one thing, this can be written as a cubic equation. We can solve it for the volume. Once we solve it for the volume, we can put the volume here and get the pressure here. So if we temperature here, so for the any given pressure, we can find out the inversion temperature, right? Now, what's the idea? Now, most of you would be confused that what's the idea behind an inversion point. Now, here I would like to explain it with a simple diagram. Now let's take it, okay? So let's take this as the temperature axis and this as the pressure axis. This as the temperature axis and this as the pressure axis. Now let us start with some temperature and pressure of a gas. Now if the pressure is very high and the temperature is very low, for most of the gases what happens is when you throttle the temperature actually tends to rise. Now it comes to a point where it's Rise is maximum and then it falls. So if you go to see, before this the temperature is rising. That is reduction in pressure is actually causing a rise in temperature. But after this the reduction in pressure is causing a fall in the temperature. And where this slope is zero, this is known as the inversion point. Now for various pressures and temperatures, we can draw isenthalpic curves. And this locus would give us the maximus, okay, or the inversion point for various isenthalpic curves. This can be H1, 
this could be h2 and this could be h3 right so remember one thing here now depending on the initial pressure and temperature condition when we are having a problem depending on the initial pressure and temperature condition we might have various inversion points that we might get because the inversion point is all about the initial enthalpy which the gas has so we will look at this more in a problem but here it suffices for you to understand that always remember one thing throttling will not always lead to reduction in temperature it might even increase to uh, lead to increase in temperature okay now hydrogen is a case in point hydrogen when it is throttled it actually tends to heat up so therefore if hydrogen is stored in a tank and there is a leak because of throttling because the leak will suddenly cause in throttling right when the gas will flow out into the atmosphere the temperature of hydrogen tends to increase and because of this hydrogen tends to self ignite and catch fire now most of the gas luckily after throttling they cool down but you have cases where hydrogen actually after throttling it tends to heat up and therefore it tends to catch fire so that was all about joule thomson coefficient application of van der waals gas joule thomson coefficient keep watching my videos for more such interesting insights into chemical engineering and chemical engineering thermodynamics okay friends bye take care and have a great time